Now, I just need to tell you, the, the Global Methodist Church is not gonna be United Methodism 2.0. In fact, listen carefully. If you think that this is just about changing the name on the front of your building and continuing to use your hymnals in the future, do not come with us. Do not. Because what we're trying to do is embed a distinctively Wesleyan DNA in this future movement. Around this church, we've been doing this for the last several years. We're putting in different pieces every year to try to get us ready for what's coming next. That said, here are my top 10 reasons why I believe I recommend that you consider the Global Methodist Church. Number one, there's consistency in doctrine. What we believe matters, and our doctrinal belief and practices are rooted in historic Christianity, which will keep us connected with and in step with the Global Big C Church. 95% of the Christians in the world believe what you do. You are not alone, even though we sometimes feel that way at annual conference. The second reason I would share is reclaiming accountable discipleship. We are deadly serious about embedding class meetings or band meetings in our local churches. This congregation is 190 years old. It was started about a half a mile from here in a blacksmith shop along Blacklick Creek in Old Reynoldsburg as a class meeting for adults and a Sunday school to teach frontier kids how to read. All we're doing here is reclaiming our DNA. And that's really important for us because in the 1840s, when the Methodists were starting a church a day, they weren't starting churches like this or any of your churches. They were starting class meetings. Those were churches. They were micro communities. They were house churches. That's important for us to remember because one of the things that we're after here is the third reason is we're serious about church planting. There are gonna be thousands of disaffected Methodists all over West Ohio, and they're gonna need places to worship. One of the things we're thinking about here is how can three or four of our Wesley groups become house churches strategically located around Columbus to attract people to be a part of a Christian community of other Methodists? Our goal is to start 3,500 house churches in seven years. We've done it before. We can do it again. The fourth reason I would tell you to join the Global Methodist Church is it's mission-driven rather than structurally bound. We presently have 13 general boards and agencies that are drowning in their own bureaucracy. During the last five years, 1,000 volunteers, none of them paid, have been working to put together recommendations on mission partnership, accountable discipleship, church multiplication, ministry with the student, ministry with the young, ministry with the marginalized, and a host of other initiatives without encumbering without the encumberment of a bloated bureaucracy. It is amazing what the Spirit of God will do if we just get out of our systems and structures and allow him to work. <laughs> the fifth reason I would recommend that you look at the Global Methodist Church is uh, we are gonna redefine and term limit episcopacy. We're gonna start by eliminating the jurisdictional conference. It's interesting that a church that still wrestles with institutional racism continues to elect its Episcopal leaders through the residue of institutional racism in the jurisdictions. There will be no lifetime of Episcopacy. And moving the bishops out, we're gonna be moving the bishops out of institutional maintenance to reclaim the teaching office of the Episcopacy so they are responsible for teaching and defending the faith. The sixth reason I would encourage you to do this is systematic accountability, systemic accountability. I, I chaired the first team that was putting together the first draft of the Doctrine and Disciplines for the United, or for the Global, or for the WCA actually, and we used to, we were trying to nail down everything we possibly could. I finally told him, I said, friends, we'll never be able to build a system that prevents bad actors or people that are ineffective but we can, we can build a system that makes it easy to remove them. An accountable system for bishops will not be controlled by bishops. <laughs> what a novel idea. And clergy, clergy will not have a guaranteed appointment. You will need to bear fruit in your ministry. That's the way it was for Wesley. It ought to be that way for us. The lady are clapping on that one. 
The seventh reason is we're gonna have a lean bureaucracy, lower costs, and there will be no trust clause. We wanna be a movement of the compelled, not constrained. You need to wanna be a part of what we're doing here. We want you to be compelled to join with us and, and be a part of this movement. It'll be intentionally lean. Annual conferences will be much smaller. The, global, uh, the, the, the general conference meeting will only happen every six years. We'll set a cap on apportionments. It'll start at 5%. You're paying 15% or more now because there are some things we better share together. And there's a cap at 10 that can only be, they can only be, the apportionments can only be raised by general conference action. Number eight, we'll have more congregational input on clergy selection. Gone will be the day when clergies and pastors are not consulted and engaged in, in clergy selection and assignment. In fact, the, the convening conference will be considering a modified call system to be implemented in the church. Number nine, there's an easier path to ordination. Can I get a witness from any local pastors in the room? Yeah, yeah. The present path can take up to 10 years. The proposed path allows ordination to happen much earlier. We believe that if you're, if you're ready to pastor a church, we ought to have some way to be ordaining you into that church. And number 10, it's gonna be global from day one. This Friday, yesterday, all the United Methodist churches in Bulgaria and Romania announced that they're leaving to come to the Global Methodist Church. There are five annual conferences in, in Africa that have announced that they're leaving to affiliate with the Global Methodist Church. There are other uh, groups of pastors and churches and other annual conferences that are announcing that they're leaving to join the Global Methodist Church. We're also being contacted by churches in, in uh, Ecuador and in Venezuela and in Costa Rica and in the Caribbean, which the United Methodist Church has never been before because they wanna be a part of this kind of a movement. We'll have churches from the Philippines we will be global from day one, and that'll include American churches. Central Texas Conference has figured out how to do this, and they have 125 churches that are leaving by May 1st to come and join the Global Methodist Church.